Good boy, bud. Good boy. Nice yawn. Nice fruit roll up tongue. <laughs> If you keep following along with the, our vlog, then you'll see how this space evolves. So, it's evolved a little bit. So it looks like it's just missing this little tab here, which this one is starting to let go too. And that's causing the cabinet part to sag. Now the only issue is, is has it sagged for so long that it's stuck there? And another issue is finding something that will work. Actually, you know what? I think I, I think I have one. I recall seeing one the other day. Let's see here. Whoa. Slippery snow. Okay, one of these two should work. This is probably a little bit too big, so that won't work. This is probably closer. Even if I have to modify it a little bit, I'm banking on this.
That should work, I think. So this desk used to belong to Ashley's grandmother. She uh, had it at a place that she worked and then when she left, uh, her grandparents used it in their automotive uh, business as well. So I bet you some of this stuff in here. Oh, hey, look at that. Tire pressure gauge. Some of the stuff in here, the receipts and stuff, are likely from when they had their automotive business. Yeah, this is a receipt. Probably getting, uh, yeah, getting paints. <laughs> I wonder if this is a key that they're like, man, I don't know what happened to the key. Barry, I don't know what happened to your key. <laughs> to your Datsun. <laughs> oh, yeah. Walmart Auto Body Shop. Walter and Mary. I'll probably have to blur that out, but it says Walmart Auto Body Shop and it has some personal information in there. That's interesting. And... Uh, Blank piece of paper, reflector, pencil, you can always use a pencil, stick that in there. Cool, I'll have to show Ashley that stuff. Okay, now I'm going to uh, give this a light sand. All right, lightly sanded it so it will be able to take a primer, but uh, I don't want to get any overspray or anything on the hardware, so I'm gonna remove all of that. Okay, so I've removed all of the hardware, including off the drawers and the little back piece there, uh, which has made the desk slump a lot more. So I put in this bar clamp here to stop it from like splaying out like a uh, newborn fawn. So this should hold it decently well until we've uh, uh, got it painted and put back together. And after taking off the hardware, I've decided since we're painting this, that I might want to keep the drawers this brown color. It might look good with the color that we're going with. And if it doesn't look good, uh, we can always just uh, prep and paint them later. But I just like the age that's in here, you know? All these scratches and wear and tear. The patina, if you will. I even like these like paint drips in here. I wonder if that's from uh, some automotive painter or whatnot. I don't know, we'll see. I can always change it if it doesn't look good. Now I know some people might uh, think that it's kind of a waste to paint this because you know it's a nice old desk and it might be worth restoring back to uh, original, which it very well might be, but we want to paint it. So that's what we're doing here. Uh, it's pretty damaged, so it's going to take a lot of work to restore it if we were to go that route. There's lots of cracks. All of this stuff can be remedied of course, but we just don't feel like doing that here. This thing has been out in the changing temperatures for, you know, 50 years. It's uh, It's got a lot of movement in it that would take uh, quite some time to get back uh, ship shape, if you will. You know, it'd be cool if this actually came from a ship, but it did. So uh, we've decided that we are going to paint it and we're going to paint it the same color that Johnny B happens to be painting some uh, 
cabinets for some folks. And it also happens to be the same wood. This is oak, and the desk itself is, uh, well, it has an oak veneer on it. Uh, so it'll look pretty much the same as this. But uh, first, we got to prime it. Johnny B. He's got his headphones in. Wait for him to notice me. Easy does it. Easy does it. Yo. <laughs> I need some primer. You need primer? Oh, I'm right here. Perfect. Thank you. Yes, sir. Oh! Just kidding. <laughs> That's expensive, bro. <laughs> First thing you gotta do is uh, mix it up. I'm like a machine. <laughs> and then pour into your makeshift paint tray. Then load up. Come on. This would be better with a real paint tray. This has no ribs. Freaking lid. There we go. And then roll. And then pretty soon, it'll look like an accountant died somewhere around here. Let this dry for about an hour and it's ready for paint. Right? Something like that? I don't know, I'm on break, so it doesn't matter to me. <laughs> <laughs> on break. You're gonna break for about an hour? Uh, about 30. Okay. 29. Then we'll paint it. Then we'll spray it. We'll bring it into the makeshift spray booth and spray it. Ooh, that's nice. Okay, so while he's spraying that, I am going to figure out what I want to do with this top. So much like the rest of the desk, it is some sort of wood that has been skinned with an oak veneer. And here, just like a lot of the desk, it's becoming delaminated. And this is likely from years of being out in the, uh, the cold. It wasn't in uh, outside, like out in the elements, but being exposed to the cold and the severe temperature changes that we have here, uh, it broke loose from the from the glue in several places. So I think what I'm going to do, yeah, is peel, oh yeah, okay, so that looks like that's probably spruce or pine. So I think I will just take off this oak veneer, see what I'm working with underneath. If it's still good, which I think it is, I will just, uh, I will just reskin it. I have a piece of oak right there that might work. So even though that is super satisfying to uh, rip it up like that, um, it's causing damage in here with the chisel. So I'm gouging the stuff that I want to keep, especially here was really bad and here was bad. And I can't really do anything but this to get it out. So it's not gouging every single time, but it's gouging it enough that it is affecting my outcome in a negative way. See, there's another gouge. Um, none of this is uh, peelable without using the chisel necessarily. Um, so it's just gonna keep, keep happening. So what I'm gonna have to do here is plane it down to make it all flat because I got lots of gouges in here that I'm not gonna be able to sand out because they're way, they're way too deep. 
So rather than peel all the rest of this wasting time, I'm just gonna plane the whole thing down. Planer is only 20 inches. This is 34 inches. So I can cut it at 17 inches. That'll be right directly in half. Throw it through there and then glue it back together and then we'll see what we have to work with. Interesting, very interesting. When I first started peeling away the veneer from this desktop here, I thought that the dirty wood underneath was either spruce or pine. And I was basing that off of the characteristics I was seeing in the grain. Wide open grain and lots of knots, both very indicative of spruce and pine. However, after planing everything away and seeing it clean, it is very plain to see, planing away, plain to see, pun unintended, it is very plain to see that this is very obviously oak, which means that they skinned out solid oak with an oak veneer. And I can see why they did that. Uh, oftentimes you will... Uh, veneer less desirable woods or to hide laminations or to hide flaws. In this case, they were trying to hide all of this insect predation and the knots and other scarring in the wood here. Um, that's just not a huge desirable outcome in a finished piece of furniture for many people. So I can understand why they covered it up. I, on the other hand, personally love this and I hope Ashley likes it too if she doesn't I'm going to save this wood for another project I really kind of despise oak in most cases but I am a huge fan of character marks in wood no matter what the species is and I think that these character marks are going to pair well with the character marks left behind by the use and abuse on the uh on the bottom of the desk. I personally subscribe to the, let's say romantic notion that the, that the marks left behind in a piece of craftsmanship or the marks that are imposed upon a natural object, any object really um, can tell a story. And some of them are very curious. They help your imagination tick forward and wonder like how did each mark get there? And then some are, are less interesting, like when you see a tire track on a road. That's, that's not that interesting. Um, come here for a sec. Yeah. I think that the story told here, let's say by Mother Nature, is going to pair well with the story told by all of the use and abuse marks on the bottom of the desk. Uh, that you could say is being told by human circumstance, let's say. And it doesn't really matter to me that these stories are different from each other. Just think about your own personal bookshelf. You have uh, many different genres of books written by many different authors, but they all have room on the same shelf and they look good together. This is 
Kind of like that, I guess. That's a pretty good analogy. What do you think of this? You like that? Do you see how these are all, these are wormholes and whatnot? Oh, really? Do you like that? Yeah, that's my goal. Yeah, you do? Yeah. Well, I'm glad you do. Um, but will you fill some of the really deep ones? Yeah. Okay. I think so. Just so, because I feel like things will get in there. Yeah. I think, it, or we'll we'll think of some sort of method to, to remedy it so that it's, a, you know, a writing-friendly surface. Yeah. Want it to be a good work surface. Okay, I am so glad that you like this. Oh, what is it? This is oak. Hmm. This was underneath the oak veneer. Oh, really? Yeah. So, uh, since they did this with the top, I bet you they also did it with the bottom. Oh. So the reason why we, uh, how do you say, we decided to upcycle this desk in particular rather than going to get a perfectly good, similar, aesthetically similar desk, like there's plenty of these antique desks at any antique store, plenty online on uh, the buy and sell groups and whatnot. But the reason why we didn't go and get a new one is because this one here holds uh, sentimental value, right? And so we wanted to upcycle this one in particular. And the reason why uh, we decided not to do a proper restoration, well, there's a few reasons really. Uh, number one, you like the painted finished look on a desk. And as do I, I think that's cool. It's kind of trendy right now, but who cares? Yeah. Things come and go, and just because it's trendy doesn't mean you're going to stop liking it because uh, some trend center told you that it's old news. Uh, so we like that look. We thought this was an acceptable project to do that on because of the heavy damage it has. And uh, since I, let's say reason number two, don't have the necessary practical skill and uh, sufficient discipline to do it, I was like, well, although this would have been a perfect project to probably start learning how to do a proper restoration, I just thought, let's say reason number three is uh, since it was veneered and the damage went below the depth of the veneer, it probably wasn't worth it because oftentimes you will veneer um, to hide less desirable wood, so it could have been bad wood underneath. Um, although it could have been awesome wood like this, that would have been actually pretty cool. Uh, it hides lamination, so maybe they were laminating several different species of wood that don't look good together. All these different factors went into deciding to do this desk the way that we're doing it. Is he chewing on something? Oh, you're chewing on the, on the, on the wood there, bud? I guess he could chew on that if he wants, or what is that? Oh, he's tearing paper. Uh, I am, in any case, we decided to do this with this desk rather than do a proper restoration for multiple reasons. And uh, I think all the reasons are practical. And in the end, uh, I think it's going to look good. A lot of people who do this style where they repaint for a clear finish, they, they will do like, uh, they'll fill all the holes and stuff. We're not worrying about that because... All of those marks and stuff there tell part of your like, well, you don't exactly know what the story is, but your grandfather had this desk, your grandmother had this desk, then your parents had this desk. I think it was Bob Shaw's desk first. Yeah, your Bob Shaw's desk first, yeah. and then your grandfather and Bob Shaw together with their automotive business, and then your parents had it, mm -hmm. and then it just became a toolbox. In fact, guys, if... Yeah. If the footage didn't get 138 ed 130 eaten, <laughs> uh, if it did, you could have seen the condition it was in the desk and what it was being used for, but all that footage is gone. But in any case, it is going to be usable again. I know people have differing opinions on how you should treat antiques and stuff like that, but uh, sometimes they're not worth saving, but at the same time, they can be worth hanging on to and sometimes you got to do things to make them uh, match your aesthetic that you're going for so that the functionality is uh, is pleasant. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I'm glad you like it. That means I can glue it up.
is it grab better? It's still that way, but rather than straight, right on one little bit. The blade. Oh yeah. All right, see ya. See you guys, see you later, dude. Rigged! It looks like turkey. It's coming out all sizzling. <laughs> oh, I got the oh, yeah. huh. Bro, literally. That's crazy. Yeah, that's exactly what I need. Dude, is that you threw it? Oh, that's the, that's the, uh... Oh! Imposter, I like that. Yeah, it's gonna have that somewhere on the uh, body, somewhere in yeah, That's, yeah, that's sick. You need to make, like, a stencil and spray paint right, it on the exactly. side, like that's it's exactly. the model number. Yeah, yeah dude, I like that. Imposter. That's great. <laughs> Of course that's not going to rip off nice and it sticks to my fingers. <sighs> How annoying. You know what? This might just peel it all out. Okay, this is going to need a little more, but I'm going to sand first. Not even close. That's better. That's closer. Too bad.
Not too bad. Thank you. <laughs> so this might work to make it work as I like burst it. Yeah, this one here? Yeah, the whole thing like <laughs> Yeah. Hilarious. Oh, that's good. It's a good thing that I made this door wider, otherwise it wouldn't have fit in there. Just a little scratch there. That can be painted over and a little scratch there. Not bad. Okay, last drawer, this middle one. I'm noticing now that the top has cured, um, we don't have that close of a color match. So with the drawers, it's got a tight grain and on the top it's got an open grain, um, which can make a difference when, you know, seeing what the, how close the color matches. But here, this is more reddish and then this is more, uh, just like a light brown tone. So I might wipe the top a little bit here. But before I do that, um, because I do like this color, I want to see if Ashley actually likes this look. Because it's not going to change much, uh, even if I change the top, you know, slightly. Um, I haven't put the hardware on yet, because I didn't want to put it on and have to take it off if we do decide to paint this. It happens to be Ashley's mom's birthday today, so her parents are over right now. So I guess we can get the opinion of everyone. See if we should paint or keep the same. Hey guys! Come have a look at this. Need your opinion. Also, Joel, who you saw, is here and his wife. So we'll see. Oh, I like it. You do? So what did you do to it? This used to be the one in the garage. The mom and dad's house. So did you paint it? Don't. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that looks really good, Josh. Yeah. Yeah? yeah. Wow, I like it. So we don't need to paint the drawers. What color were you going to paint the drawers? Same, the same blue. You kept this, right? Yeah, it's backwards so that we could actually use this part. But we can flip it around, yeah. Oh, I told Josh I want to keep that. Whose numbers are on this? I have no idea. Let's look. Let's see. Pure Ford, Grove Pontiac, Honda, Frank, Chester, Louis, Sundance, Nasta, Chester, Six. Beep! Yeah, I think that was the one that was in the garage. Is that still the same number? Percy Page. <laughs> yes. Yeah, actually, and I found some receipts that were stuck in there. Oh, really? Yeah, and, and a bank thing that said like their business name. I forget what it was. Walmart? Walmart, yeah, there we go. What, where is it? It's in the garage. Want me to go get it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Joe would love to see that. Okay. Did Dad see this? So this was all in there. That was a terrible truck. Oh, was it? Yeah. Okay. Oh, no, Dad's in. No, that's a terrible truck. Wow. Random receipt. And then... No Walmart toy shop. <laughs> no, it's just a random. Is that what a truck? No way. That was for the red Toyota? I think so. Thank you, Cook. Yeah. What is That's it? That's for the red Toyota. It says Datsun on it, but. On the, the, but that's a Toyota key. Yeah. I'm almost certain that's the one. Cool, cool. Okay. This looks awesome. Good job. Okay, put it back in there backwards so that we can. It is a nice blue. It just happened to be the color blue that Johnny B was painting some cabinets. 
And he had some leftover, so. Thank you. Cool. Let's go eat some cake. All right, we're back. Hello, Penny. Um, so last night, before I went to bed, I uh, I put on another uh, wash of stain, uh, more of a reddish stain to kind of make it match better with the uh, with the drawer fronts here. And then I also put on the hardware. And we were thinking, should we polish the hardware or just leave them tarnished like this? So I don't know. What do you guys think? Polish them up so they're nice shiny brass, or just leave them tarnished and and uh, aged like this. I think it looks good, and it'll probably look good uh, polished as well. I'm not sure, man. Such a suck today. Um, yeah. So since we did all that, I guess we are ready for the final little bit of elbow grease, and that's to put the clear coat on there, and then we can set it up and see how we want it configured. And as I put this on, the color will become a little richer and it may actually bring this uh, to a closer uh, identifying match to the, to the drawers as well. This is cured overnight, so it's, uh, it dolls up a little bit. So once you put this clear coat on there, it makes the color pop a little more. Yeah, there we go. That polycrylic, I think, has popped color enough to make. It's kind of hard to see with the how the light is reflect or is bouncing off the top and not on the front. But in person, that's a pretty decent color match. I'm happy with that. The only thing is, is that this is a wide grain, so it takes the color a little differently. If I wanted to, I could spend a lot more time on it. But uh, we're both happy with this, so we're gonna leave it like that. Now. Uh, I'm going to do this in a few coats, and uh, the reason is because uh, the polycrylic causes the grain to raise, and it makes it pretty rough. So I'm going to knock it down with uh, some sandpaper, a decently high grit, not super high. In this case, it's 400 grit. I'm going to sand with the grain just lightly all the way down. Just do it. 
couple passes just like this and this should make a big difference oh yeah that's nice and smooth now if I run over a rough part here like it's I don't know if you can hear that very well it'd be better if you could feel it but there's a massive difference so I'm just gonna do the same thing over the whole surface here there we go and now before I uh, put on a second coat I want to take a damp rag and wipe it down to get rid of all of that sanding residue and that way it won't contaminate and gum up the second coat Okay, I'm not sure how easy it's going to be able to see, but there is some white residue on here. And the goal is to get all of that off of our surface here. So we're now going to take the clean part of the rag and basically do the same thing. And I'm going to do this a few times. I'm going to poly, I'm going to sand, and then I'm going to wipe off with a damp rag until I'm happy. And I'm going to be happy when uh, everything is evenly and acceptably smooth. Now, I don't remember how many coats of poly I put on here yesterday, but it was a lot. And uh, it is, there's no roughness at all. The, uh, the Velcro effect is gone, so nothing gets snagged on it. This thing turned out great. Well, actually, the whole thing uh, came together nicely. I really like it. The only thing we didn't really fix, as I explained earlier, is the dings and dents and stuff. All those stories are still uh, out in the open. The shitty veneer, uh, the cracks, and everything basically, all the all the wear and tear type damage is still is still on dis on display, if you will. However, I did fix fix the sag, so everything mates nicely. Everything uh, works better now. Like all the drawers can open without being like right they slide nicely i decided not to engage the locking mechanism where you need to open this drawer to open these drawers because we don't have the key for this lock and if this somehow ever got locked we may have to uh, wreck it to uh, be able to open up these drawers and we don't want to do that now that we got it at this point i actually really really dig the way this this looks even with all the damage there i think this to me is better than doing a proper restoration it isn't a valuable antique and if it was maybe i wouldn't have gone this route but since we had the uh the liberties afforded to us to do so uh without any you know guilt of destroying uh you know a real treasure i a plus, I like this. It's not gonna be everyone's taste, as I always say, but I don't care, it's it's ours. And uh, now that it's done, I guess the only thing left to do, whew, this chair rolls a little better than I thought it would. The only thing left to do is take our temporary desk, and uh, well, actually, we only just need like one of the computers on here. Uh, we'll take one of them and place it on, ooh, the desk. Oh, that's going to need a little bit of touch of paint. Whoops. <laughs> but anyway, we figured that rather than uh, clutter up our nice new desk with two big computers, we just put on our smallest computer here and, you know, <laughs> obviously I'm just kidding. That's just the radio. Uh, but I'm actually not minding this setup here. I actually really like it here under the window. Ashley wanted it under the window. This is her workspace and she didn't want to look at a wall. She'd rather look out into the gapling forest. So decided to put the desk underneath the window and I actually really like this. Hopefully it works practically with everything else we need to fit into this room. But for now, this works perfectly. The only thing I don't like about it is that we have these lights here and uh, when we had our temporary desk there, everything had some symmetry. But uh, now we're missing some symmetry. So I think I may actually add another light up on the ceiling here just to regain some of that symmetry and then I'll have to do something else on the ceiling because I know that the so when we put these lights here we had to move this one over slightly so that they were the same distance from the outside walls and I think it's going to bug me that this light here is going to be a different distance from that wall as that one is but 
we'll figure it out. For now, this is what we're focusing on, having this desk here, and I really, really like it. I think it looks really good. Thank you. 